City Guide. La nouvelle vague des spiritueux allemands par François Monti. It may seem weird how much a cliché may stick sometimes. Gastronomy, at least liquid gastronomy, owes a lot to Germany. Hot plants amateurs will think of that famous decree about the cleanliness of beers, a decree that is now almost 600 years old. As for us, we will remember that most of the first American bartenders were German immigrants or the sons of Germans. Harry Johnson, Henry Ramos, and William Schmidt are the most well-known. Oddly, these same barmen barely used any ingredients from their home countries, even though we know that Germany has been making exceptional eau de vie for many centuries. Though Johnson, who includes in his books a list of the essential products, mentions schnapps, kirsch, goldwasser, and other minor distillates, he only uses these ancestral spirits in three recipes. Kirsch, the most famous German alambic, only became popular when the cocktail was spreading through Europe during the early 20th century. And, it is very revealing, the most famous cocktail with a Kirch base was invented by a British man, Johnny Nita, at the Chatham Hotel, one of the first Parisian cocktail temples. The rose, as the cocktail was called, mixed Kirch with dry vermouth and cherry brandy, becoming one of the most famous cocktails in the 1920s. Aside from this recipe, German eau de vie and liquors seemed forever bound geographically to German-speaking regions, and gastronomically, to the European tradition of the digestif, or a shot taken after a meal. We often forget this old image. German eau de vie are made by first-class distilleries, often privy to family knowledge and techniques, with high-quality fruits. Having neither sugar nor extracts, they offer a first-class gustatory experience, far different than that of liquors and French creams. These traditional houses are progressively opening up to experimenting, collaborating, and sharing their knowledge with new producers. Clearly, there's a lot to uncover. Little by little, today's German bartenders, unlike their forefathers, allow themselves to be seduced by German spirits. For example, Oliver Ebert, first-class mixologist and owner of Berlin's Lost in Grub Street, makes drinks mostly centered around punch, but also has cocktails prepared with alcool d'auteur, often nationally made. We, for example, had the chance to taste a blend of Riesling, Apple Eau de Vie, coffee liquor, and Tarragon 100% Teuton. During the Bar Convent Berlin 2015, this new trend was clearly represented with dozens of products, ranging from traditional to innovative. We brought you this small selection showing the versatility of German distillers. We hope that their products will inspire drinkers beyond their borders. Weissbrand Birds, Wine Spirit, Weissbrand Distilling Company. Why make gin when we can make something else? It all starts with the Wolf, made by the double distillation of very high quality sweet wine, a superb eau de vie, though extremely expensive. Following the same qualitative precepts, why not create a new style, something that could resemble a gin without being a gin? It starts here, a distillation of Moselle Riesling with 12 botanic products from five continents, some common, some less so. Apple, black currant, eucalyptus, and cocoa Meet mace, anise, orange, and clove. With great finesse, this new product gives you a glimpse of all the possibilities available to the mixologist. The Earl Spirit, tea-based liqueur, Earl Spirit. We often invent stories to give history to a product. Here, the story is the inspiration for everything else. Fabian Fuchs was chosen as the executor of a distant parent who had lived in East Germany. Among the papers left behind, he found the unedited manuscript of a book about a spy in 1920s London and Paris. Rather than drinking martinis, the spy drinks a black tea-based liqueur. It is this recipe that the Earl Spirit recreates. Bergamot, lemongrass, black tea, and ginger. Think Russian tea with just a bit more. This liqueur was just recently launched, and though their financial means are small, we are curious to see where they'll go. Windspiel, gin, Eiffelion. Frederick II's Prussia was one of the first European states to see a rise in growing potatoes, which rapidly became a common ingredient in German cuisine. Of course, they can also be used for distillation, whether it's vodka or gin. Windspiel is an elaborate gin with potatoes grown in volcanic soil in the Eiffel region. Botanic products, including lavender flower and ginger, macerate in neutral alcohol and can be distilled individually. The result of those distillations is mixed with potato alcohol to get a well-bred and elegant gin, just like a greyhound, or windspiel in English. Ferdinand's Tsar Quince, Quince's Liqueur, Capulet and Montague Limited. As you can imagine, Ferdinand's gin made a lot of noise when it came out. 
a gin with a little bit of semi-sweet Riesling, whose aroma comes mostly from vineyards. Ferdinand's sour quince is Capulet and Montague's response to the English slow gin. They start, obviously, with gin, to which they add Cabinet, one of the best German Rieslings. Then, they infuse that with quince harvested from the lands of Andreas Wallander, the distiller whose family has been distilling since 1824. A blend of modernity and tradition, the result is, unsurprisingly, excellent. Ferdinand Saar Dry Vermouth Dry Vermouth, Capulet and Montague Limited If you don't use wine in your gin production and you have some left, what do you do? Make a vermouth, of course. After all, the word comes from the German vermut, or absinthe, in English. Although the country is not particularly known for its vermouth production, some people decided to change that. Dorothy Zillikin is a wine grower who works with her parents. She only produces Rieslings, renowned all over the world, and it is she who makes the wines necessary to make the gin. The first Riesling vermouth is very surprising. The wine dominates the herbs for a balanced and elegant result. When paired with Ferdinand's gin, the result is sure to be a particularly striking martini. Monkey 47 Distillers Cut 2015 Gin, Black Forest Distillers This sudden passion for heritage isn't the only explanation for the German distillers' comeback. With their strong experience, some distillers started making more popular products like gin. While doing so, they generated interest in their other products. Monkey 47 is, without a shadow of a doubt, the most well-known German brand. Aside from their classic gin and their slow gin, they also advertise a distiller's cut each year, limited to 4,000 bottles. For the 2015 edition, distiller Christoph Keller added Mium Athemanticum to the 47 basic ingredients. The liquid obtained remained for three months in terracotta containers before being diluted with water from the Black Forest. Fauda Fina Branda Himber Syrup Raspberry Syrup Fauda Fina Branda There's more to life than just alcohol, so we've slipped in a raspberry syrup, showing the quality of Florian Fauda's fruit picking. At 30, he seems like a baby among the other German distillers. Fauda founded his business in 2006 at his family farm, and his reputation hasn't stopped growing since. His philosophy is simple, though sometimes hard to keep. He only gets his fruit locally and only works with fresh fruits. Fresh raspberries pressed with care, sugar, and just a little drop of citric acid. The fruit's flavor is not diluted. Simple and delicious. Fauda Feine Branda Sauer Kirschlikör Sour Cherry Liqueur Fauda Feine Branda Though the art of German distillation is most well known for its production of Kirsch, there are of course many other liqueurs produced as well, in particular with cherries. Often, these cherries produce products with strong notes of almond and a sugary flavor that assails the taste buds. However, this is not the case with this sour and incredibly gourmand cherry liqueur. At Florian Fauda's, the standard is the same for all production, fruit grown locally and the utmost care and attention given during the production process. Sour cherry juice, eau de vie, just a little bit of sugar, all while preserving the fruit's tartness. It all seems very simple, except the result. Balanced, fruity, and deep. Belsazar, vermouths, dry, white, red, and rosé. Belsazar GmbH. Created by longtime employees at Duke Gin and Thomas Henry Soda, Belsazar offers vermouths that blend German wine and distillation heritage for some really interesting results. Made by the Alfred Schlaterer Distillery, quality is a guarantee. Each vermouth is made with local wine. Gutzidel, Spatbergener, Gerwutzramener, and Pinot Noir, among others. The sugar is provided by the Mistel, while Schlaterer's Eau de Vie is added to each batch. Natural, and aside from a very few spices, 100% German. The rosé vermouth is particularly worth a taste. Mark Groffler, Kreis Wasserli. Kirsch, Alfred Schlaterer. At Alfred Schlaterer, distillation has run in the family for six generations. Philip Schlaterer currently runs the family business, founded in 1844 and particularly renowned for its William Pear or its Black Forest Kirsch. The latter is made with multiple kinds of cherries, though Schlaterer also has a more exclusive version that we are presenting here. This exceptional Kirsch is distilled exclusively with sweet cherries from the Mark Grafferland region. It is aged for at least five years, first in ash barrels that don't give color to the liquid, and then in terracotta containers. A true gustatory pleasure, even with a 50% alcohol content.